you're very welcome to today's very first Facebook Live. Um, it was a great idea with uh, with Ember to kind of try and present some social media tips uh, to you. Um, I suppose just to introduce myself, um, I go by the name of the Curly Marketer. You're probably wondering where that would even come from. Um, it's not because of curly hair, it's because I look at marketing in a very sort of a different point of view in that it's never a straight line like A to Z. Even with the best strategies, it's very much full of twists and turns and you have to pivot and be nimble, especially when you're a small medium enterprise where you're trying to juggle lots of different things. Mm -hmm. But I suppose uh, what we wanted to try and do for this very first Facebook Live is to talk to you about the bedrock of something that is very, very intrinsic to every business, whether you're a multinational or a, a, an entrepreneur that works for themselves, like myself and Emer, and it's the whole area of, of strategy, um, social media strategy. And I suppose there's a, it's not to sound cliche, but there's a very, I suppose, apt saying of around the world of, you know, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Because if you don't know your roadmap or where you want to go to mm -hmm. this month, next quarter, yeah. this year, you're in trouble. So. Yeah, so it's it, it comes down to also, um, you know, in business, you have your different areas that you strategize, but sometimes you don't think about your online presence. Um, you know, um, not everybody has a website. Um, you know, you're not sure which platform to be on, where your audience is, who your audience is. Um, you know, uh, how do you find your customer? Um, and so you need strategies to help you um, get in line with all that. And so that's what we're going to talk about today um, and some sort of a content marketing strategy and a few points in that as well. So it might get you sort of thinking ahead how you want to go forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I suppose because we didn't want to just kind of sit here and say, right, let's talk about Facebook or everyone should be on Twitter or you should be on YouTube because they are the tactics essentially that you would apply later on. You need to have an understanding as to where your business is at. Now, there is, I suppose, a couple of steps we want to kind of go through with you, which we hope by the end of this Facebook Live will give you some food for thought, maybe some tips and I suppose, uh, I suppose a roadmap and the, the position to be able to allow yourself go away and look at your own business. Um, now, the first step that we always tend to try and advise clients is to look at what's known as the situational analysis. And now, not to kind of sound jargony, but that's kind of taking a very critical review of your business as to where it is today. You know, who are your clients and your prospects? You know, do you really know who these are? You know, have you ever engaged with your clients um, as to why they work with you. There's a number of people that I've often spoken to, and I'm sure Emer is the same, yeah. where you'll ask people, why do your clients work with you? And people kind of go, we actually don't know. They just gave us the business. And when you've actually engaged with your customers, you'll certainly kind of find nuggets of real wisdom. Well, we love your customer service. Your response time has always been fantastic, etc. cetera. You know? yeah. um, I think, you know, looking at your current products and services, you know, once again, myself and Emu, we were talking before we came on, and even for ourselves, you know, when we start to look at what we offer, yeah, we're not just social media a trainer or a social media manager, because we do so many other things. And look at your own business, you know, are you a consultant, but maybe you also do other kind of deliverables that you've never thought of as being a, an actual monetized product or service. Um, have you set objectives? Do you know what your current objectives are? Because if you've no objectives set for your business, just the way myself and Eva have objectives set for our yeah. business, if you don't know where you're going, you know, what's the plan for this month? You know, what's the plan for next month, for the quarter? Then you could be just kind of, I suppose, going off in lots of different tangents and trying lots of different things, but with no real kind of understanding as to why you're doing what you're doing. Um, I think very much, are you doing marketing at the moment? Are you doing any social media or maybe not, but have you done direct mail, radio, press, TV, door drops? Mm -hmm. Are you getting any traction? It's like a, um, a mix, you know, um, a good content mix. So um, offline and online, um, because you can't just rely on social media. Um, I always say to people, your social media and your websites go hand in hand. So, um, you know, if you haven't got a good landing page, people then are going to, 
become mm, that's not very trustworthy. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, um, thinking ahead, sort of, what is your customer's pain points, and you know how you can strategize to solve that problem. Um, so, why would what would be the main reason someone would come to you um, and um, have you know have a conversation with you? I mean, if somebody comes to me, they they want to know about you know um, what kind of training do you do, and um, what's uh, the best platform for them, and um, that's they're trying to figure out what their 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 needs are before they can kind of you know be direct with their customer um, and getting you know a uh, customer to get to know like and trust them through you know if they go on Twitter is that the best platform for them it may not be um, again a lot of small businesses have Facebook but maybe they're not fully optimized and they haven't got the right information there and your customer then maybe doesn't realize everything about you you know and as philip was saying may not cover all the services and if you don't provide all that information then you could lose a customer yeah absolutely i think um i think sometimes a trap that a lot of businesses fall into is that they have to be on every channel you know oh we have to be on snapchat or we have to be on pinterest and generally kind of the wisdom would always be is you know be where your customers are going to be you know if they're just on a facebook or maybe they're on a linkedin well then that's the sort of the channel to kind of utilize but exactly as emer said social media is purely another tactic another method to engage with your customers i think the ultimate thing is that i think you know using tools like potentially hubspot or some of the other crm systems where you know the engagement points with your clients each month you know that you're actively following up on maybe previous work, that you have a kind of an understanding as to your client's business as to, okay, we worked with this client maybe three or six months ago, maybe now is a time to re-engage with them. You know, is there a chance to upsell or cross-sell? So, you know, part of the process is always to be as embedded with your client to really get to know their business better than them. And this whole kind of, I suppose, ethos of being proactive, you know, for your information, you know, there's, there's a wonderful way to kind of build a relationship with a client is to, you know, be proactive by giving them a solution or some tips or some help without them actually looking for it reactively as such. Um, there's a great tool that I've used for myself personally, and um, I know Emer has used it with her clients and herself, is the, uh, and it's an old school marketing technique called the SWOT analysis, you know, strengths, yeah. weaknesses, opportunities and threats, you know, I, yeah. I think, um, you know, I think if you know your strengths, what you're good at, and you really drill down yourself or with your team, you may find and even engage your clients as to what you're strong on. You may find that there's other things that you never considered a strength that you can uh, use uh, within your marketing. Yeah. So it's basically what you do is you do a cross and then you put your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. So your strengths and your weaknesses are your internal factors and your opportunities and your threats are your external factors. So by sitting down and saying to yourself, right, or even sitting down with someone you know and say, look, what do you, what do you think um, are my strengths and what are my weaknesses? You know, you may need to learn um, something that you hadn't considered before. Um, the opportunities there from having a new skill then would um, give you um, maybe a broader reach to other customers that you wouldn't have had before. Um, your threats would probably be competitors or again going back to your weaknesses that you don't have that service or you don't have that latest skill. Um, so by doing a SWOT analysis you can su sometimes surprise yourself and go right I need to go and find out about this or I need to you know uh, market in this area um, and it could widen your reach in a short space of time. You know? Yeah absolutely and I, I think a great thing that I've learned with from doing this one analysis is that if you are able to kind of understand particularly the weaknesses uh, and for example say you may find that maybe customer service or your customer response time to when a report request came through if that's a weakness inherently that may start to if it's not I suppose looked after that eventually could become a threat that could erode some of the strengths that you may have uh, and maybe erode into your opportunities. So, and once again, it's a real sort of, I suppose, way to take a deep dive on your business to kind of really kind of see uh, is everything as it should be with the with the business and where can you improve. Um, 
I think another kind of next step, when you've done that sort of situation analysis, when you've done that deep dive and really had a good overview as to kind of what your business is about, where you are as a business, uh, where maybe the weak points and the opportunities, et cetera, are, is a critical step, you know, which myself and Ima we were only discussing this morning, is your the type of customer that you want to work with or mm. customer personas. Because there's an awful lot of businesses who never really understand as to well, who is my ideal customer. It's more of a case of about we just need to get the business in. But if you don't really know um, who your core target business is, then your kind of sort of your marketing and the tactics and the messaging that you use to create will never be on point because your your message never resonates as such. Yeah. That makes sense. So like for example, if you're a if you have a Facebook business page, you can go into your insights and you can go in and see your demographic, um, who's engaging with you and what content they're interested in. Um, and you you know what you're posting could be solving a problem for them. So you could then say, right, well, my customer is Mary who lives in uh, Trim and uh, she needs, um, you know, cakes um, for different events and um, I, I need to sort of focus on that. Um, so if you have a bakery, um, we know we have Marilyn who uh, uh, has a great Harvest Home Bakery. Um, she could be looking at and seeing what um, events are coming up, um, for example. Um, I hope Marilyn doesn't mind me mentioning her. But, um, you know, uh, she does great cakes and, um, you know, not good for the waistline, but anyway, but highly recommend her. Um, so uh, that, that's what I'm trying to say is let, look at your insights and see what your customers are interested in, their, their demographic, where they're located. Um, and you could be very surprised. So if you go into Facebook and you go into your business page, you'll see insights. And if you go in and have a look, you, you might find some very interesting information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good tip. Yeah, like use the kind of the, the analytics that are at your disposal if you have access to them. Um, like also as well, even kind of creating um, even on a simple piece of paper, you know, where you turn some of your customers uh, into almost like personalities. Um, this was an exercise I did in my previous company where I actually created characters and when we looked at it, we actually had four different types of customer that the business which I was in originally was direct mail, personalized direct mail company. And we had four characters. One were creative agencies, and they would only come to us if our messaging from your promoting ourselves was that we were creative or innovative with the type of mail campaigns that we created. But then we had another group of customers who were procurement people, and their core need and want was budget savvy. So there would be no point targeting those people with a message about or creative, etc. We had to go with messaging that was saying, well, we'll save you money, and this is how much we're going to save you by coming with us. And then we had a third group who were all about data protection or ISO accreditation. So once again, when you really know your customers right down finite and you know what their pain points are, then you can create the value proposition as in the type of triggers that will make them gravitate to you because your content is solving their their problems or you're presenting a solution that they feel is going to be working for them. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, customer personas is a key one. Yeah. Um, objectives, that it tends to be then the next stage. Uh, you've now done a deep dive on your business. You now have a fairly good handle on who your core target customer is. Now you need to set yourself some objectives. Um, and there's a couple of different methods. Uh, you probably a lot of you may have heard of the SMART method, you know, which is specific, read upon, uh, realistic, and timing. Um, there is also a, a social media framework called the, the RACE model, which stands for reach, act, engage, and convert. They very much state the same sort of things, um, is to set yourself objectives. I always kind of feel trying to tell myself objectives for the month, for the quarter, and for the year. Yeah. Um, because when you know where you're going, say in the month, as in I know core objectives that I need to get done for my business within this month, whether it be new business outreach, um, changing some stuff for my brand, it keeps me very, very focused. 
because then it means that the activities that I'm working on are leveraging myself in the direction to achieve those objectives. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's, it's going from there. And then again, you've got to say to yourself, have I done my homework? Do I know, as I say, you, you look at what's coming up maybe seasonally. Some businesses would work more seasonally focused and, you know, the trends that are coming up. Um, sometimes it's good to even go and do a bit of research. Even there's a tool called Google Trends and you can go in and you put in a keyword and it'll show you what's coming up and it will help you maybe with a strategy going forward. Um, I know Paddy's Day is coming up, so um, you know, a lot of businesses will be focused on that. Then it's Mother's Day. Um, and then, you know, uh, going forward, it's Easter. So there's, yeah. you know, um, but there's things also in between there that will maybe surprise you, you know. Um, but they, that's seasonal, I think, can work for a lot of small businesses. Yeah, very much so. I think, um, I think as you mentioned, the, kind of the, the everyday calendar, you know, those key events that's going to happen Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's, yeah. Easter, um, and then even engaging with your own customers from a CRM perspective as to, you know, an anniversary when they come on business with you or say when maybe they took out a particular product with you, you know, is there a chance to re-engage from the anniversary when they took out that product mm -hmm. to say, listen, we have an upgrade, um, how are things going? Because that's a big thing. I think a lot of people forget is that customer relationship management is so intrinsic for every business and especially for businesses like ourselves where it tends to be just us and we might have a few kind of team members around us yeah. um, and if you keep that relationship strong by you know I suppose as I say you'll probably have heard of the saying you know never kind of um, over promise and under deliver I like to flip it around under promise and over deliver you know because that's what leaves the impression with your customers you know, you've gone above and beyond. And then that's ways, I think, for, especially as I found, and I'm sure yourself, you know, testimonials, word of mouth. Yeah. You know, never underestimate word of mouth um, and kind of be looking to ask for testimonials from clients when you've done a good job. You know, I don't see ever say anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because in, in this digital world, people still will go and look at people's testimonials or people that they feel they have an affinity with to say, well, there is a person that is just like me, and they're talking very highly of this company. It's like, you know, people wonder how, you know, how you would get a, um, a review put on Google. It's easy if you uh, apply for Google My Business, and you um, then you get the postcard, they send you the details, you can start having an online presence with that, and then that's where your customers can um, add a review. So you probably notice it's it's on a, on the screen when you put in a business name, and over on the right hand side you'll look down and see like a postcard effect, and that's where people would add you know you see your five star rating. Um, a lot of hotels, restaurants, um, small businesses, everybody can use it. Um, um, and then also if you can ask them to leave the same review on your Facebook. Um, and even sometimes it's nice even to post um, a, a review um, from a customer yeah. just to show people that, you know, you appreciate that, that they've gone to the effort of, of um, giving you a testimonial. But also remember, reply back to them um, to say thank you. Um, uh, there's nothing worse than getting a testimonial and then you don't reply back to them. Um, so it's nice to say thank you. Absolutely, you know? and thanks for all the hearts and the likes. We feel yeah. very loved, very loved. We're very <laughs> nervous. You know, I'm very nervous. I'm not good on Facebook lives, so. Um, but uh, yeah, we get yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Listen, you know, uh, the, the one thing I always say to people when it comes to social media is that you'll never be an expert uh, in social media. You have to constantly keep learning and growing yeah. and because as we are doing this live at the moment, I guarantee you, the Facebook algorithm, Twitter algorithm, LinkedIn algorithm have changed or they've been updated. Mm -hmm. And I think all you can basically kind of do is to be very understanding as to where your business is and where you want to take it and how to use the various tools and tactics at your disposal to present your business as best you can to your target audience. That's why Facebook Lives are at the moment really, really um, top of the, the content tree. And then from their video, um, mm -hmm. then go down to photographs, um, and then your uh, links to articles um, and yeah. that kind of thing. So having a good content mix. Mm. Um, so I'll have to start doing more Facebook lives. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to um, that. Like I think, I think one thing, and we will 
you know, as we progress on, and hopefully you're finding what we're talking about today of useful, uh, useful to you, and we'll give you some, I suppose, steers uh, and the importance of having a strategy because. There's a company in the UK called Smart Insights, um, very well-known social media research insights company in the UK, and they did a fairly detailed piece of research back in 2017 where content marketing uh, exploded by way of content marketing, so creating the blogs and you know your videos and all of the content that promotes your business. But what people were finding is that they were having a challenge with getting any results from the content marketing and the correlation of that was because nearly 50% of them had no documented strategy as to why they were doing what they were doing. And I think that's, if you can take nothing away from today's is that is to kind of look at your business and kind of see, do you have a roadmap in place as to where you want to take it and how to reach your customers? Um, I have a few points here actually yeah. when it comes to, um, uh, when it comes to your content marketing, um, it would be so trying to find a goal. Um, so what are, what is your main focus? Is it Paddy's Day is coming up and you're in the catering business? So what are you going to try and edutain your audience with? That means educate and entertain because people like to learn things. They're always looking up for how tos and you know where is the best. Uh, place to go or um, what's the top 10 tips you can give them. Um, uh, research and understand your audience yeah. as you were saying earlier. Yeah. Um, if you haven't considered it, maybe think about setting up a blog. Um, I, I'm not the best blogger, I blog once a month, but I my, my audience would be for people that aren't really social media savvy and they just want to learn something that will help them. So I keep it simple in that regard. So, you know, um, it depends on your business, but look and ask people what you're, what they're interested in, you know, when they come to you, and then that will help you maybe start with titles for your blog. Um, update your current content. So you could have something and um, you might have an update on it. That would be something that would interest people because if it's got engagement, they're likely to be more in, uh, interested again in maybe an update. Um, have a brainstorm. Um, you know, with, um, you know, friends, family, you know, something that you say, what would interest you if you were to, um, you know, follow me on Facebook or whatever, you know, uh, they could be very, very honest, more so than you would expect. Um, decide which format of content you want to produce. So that goes back again to do you go down the road and take the chance of a Facebook Live. Um, um, I'm doing it with Philip today because I didn't want to come on my own. So there, I'm just being honest. Um, is it, do you want to uh, put out um, a, a, car, you know, a selection of photographs of behind the scenes with your business or would you want to video behind the scenes? You know, um, people are always very interested in what goes on behind closed doors. They are, I always feel like I'm always interested. So, um, and maybe uh, look at, you know, um, again, going back to what social media platforms will suit. Generally, a lot of small businesses are on Facebook, but um, Instagram would really be something to consider because people eat with their eyes and um, it's great in a lot of industries. Um, I'm, I'm even on um, Instagram and there's only, I find it very funny because I say, oh, it's only so many photographs of a laptop you can take. But yeah. there's other things, you know, that you can um, engage with um, and, uh, you know, see what other people are doing on Instagram and say, well, that seems to work for them. So maybe I'll give it a go and do something similar. So, Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, like as we as we move on, this is the first Facebook Live. Thank you very much, everyone who, who joined us. Hope you found some benefit from what we shared today. As I said, a strategy is very, very critical. But as we kind of go on with these, we will kind of delve into, I suppose, some of the specific channels, some of the tactics and tips that, that you can uh, utilize to your benefit. Um, and certainly something like a blog has a whole host of benefits, uh, primarily by, because is that when you write a blog post, you can then repurpose that into multiple tweets. You could turn it into a video. You could turn it into a downloadable for your website to capture email addresses. Um, but I think the key thing is with something like a blog for your website, it, has a couple of different things that it allows you to do. One, it gives you that chance to get ranked by Google because as their um, bots are crawling your site, they'll see that you're updating it with 
new content uh, as often as you can, which is good. The other thing is, though, is that it presents you as an industry expert, as someone that's an expert in your industry, as a thought leader. And it gives you the ability to also then tap into what are the industry trends happening in your niche. And particularly if you have a customer service team, you should kind of link in with them to find out well, what are the sort of the, the queries, the pain points, the customer issues that they are finding because out of that, you have something that could maybe create a point of difference. And it's funny, we were talking about um, GDPR mm -hmm. um, there a while ago and everyone went GDPR mad and frightened, etc. But I noticed the companies that did um, come out with solutions or articles in relation to getting ready for GDPR were the ones that that, uh, that won. So, yeah. Right. So, so uh, I think that's probably it, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, I know it's, we've just, as I say, this first one we've done, we, we, um, we'd like some feedback and see if there's things that people would like us to cover, maybe more specifically. Um, you know, is it, you know, um, how to write a, a Facebook post, you know, captions, um, maybe how to find the right hashtags, um, you know, talk about tone of voice um, and, uh, you know, yeah, that's yeah. kind of where what that's what we're kind of wondering what people would like, yeah. and, you know. And um, um, Philip is more of a strategist, um, and uh, I'm delighted he came on to start the ball rolling with uh, strategy because again he's right. If you don't have some sort of strategy to uh, go forward with, you're you're not really going to um, get out there, and you're not really going to engage with people. So um, it's a really good point yeah, to so. start with. Yeah. So, uh, listen, thanks again, and certainly the feedback, if you let us know if you feel that 20 minutes or 15 minutes would be better, because we know everybody's time is under pressure, yeah. so, uh, so let us know if you prefer maybe to keep it to maybe 15 minutes, that's absolutely no problem. And yeah. uh, thanks to Weimer, thanks to all of you. Yes, and, thank uh, you very much everyone we'll, we'll for listening we'll, and we'll, watching. We'll I'm sorry about earlier, but um, I don't know what went wrong, but sure, you know, maybe right. it shows you going live isn't always... Uh, the easiest, you know. Yeah, we keep but, it real anyway. So, uh, so yeah. we'll see you again hopefully um, next month. And as always, do pass over your comments and uh, the topics, and we'll start uh, going. And listen, have a great rest of your day and week. Yeah.